guitarist Miles Okazaki here, and this is a video for a, a book that I wrote called Fundamentals of Guitar, right here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about harmonics, the natural harmonics in the string, and this is uh, from page one of the book is where this starts. Um, this is something that I got into a little bit on this other video called Tuning the Guitar, and in that one it was more of a practical how to get the guitar in tune with harmonics, basically. Uh, this one is more about how the string works and the real basics of uh, vibrations and frequencies and things like that. A little less practical, but also uh, interesting, and it can give you some ideas about you know uh, musical things to, to do. So uh, let's think about the string. So here's a string instrument, a guitar. It could be any string instrument, a bass, violin, whatever. Uh, but um, I play guitar, so here it is. And uh, I'm going to play this string. Now, this string is vibrating from this point to this point. This is the length of it. Okay. And what is it doing? It's moving in some kind of motion like this. And it's vibrating, and the whole thing is vibrating. It's not, it's not divided in any kind of way. It's, it's not stopped. So uh, it's in one part. And so we call it the first partial, or the fundamental. All right? Um, and this is how the book begins. It's a fun book on fundamentals. It begins talking about the fundamental. And uh, like the page one of the book is this. Uh, it's a drawing of the of the, the fretboard and uh, has harmonics kind of drawn on it as circles or numbers. And uh, this video is sort of a explanation of that because there's no explanation in the actual book of that uh, diagram. So uh, I'm going to do it. On this video, sort of with the instrument, so you can you can hear as well as see. So, the fundamental, the first partial of the A string. Now, uh, the whole thing is vibrating. Now, what if I put uh, something in the middle and touch it? Now, the the pitch goes up. It goes up an octave, right? And uh, the question is why? Well, you can see where I'm, I'm not just putting this anywhere. I'm putting it right in the middle. Like this is the whole length, right? And I, I look at it and I try to divide it in half. I say, okay, half is here. Okay, that's where half is. Uh, now what I've done is I've split the string in half. So uh, instead of one big vibrating thing, now it's two vibrating things, and they're kind of they're kind of stopping here in the middle like this, you know. And and they're vi they're both vibrating. And what you're hearing is is the length of that as if it's two strings that are each half as long as the original one, right? So. Uh, what that does is, if you cut a string in half, uh, it'll give you, you know, it'll give you double the frequency of the original thing. Cutting a shorter string makes a higher pitch, basically. So, and a shorter string by exactly half gives you a higher pitch of exactly double. Right? It's one half and two to one. It's like an inver inverse relationship. So, uh, so here's the whole string. One ten. Half the string is uh, two twenty. Okay. And this is the second partial, dividing it into two parts. Okay. Third partial. Right? Doing that because there's a third of the string is here, a third of the string is here, and a third of the string is here. When I touch it on one of those spots, one of these two spots, because the three things, if you imagine three things are here, there's two spots where you can like divide it up um, that are in between those three things, right? Uh, uh, that gives me uh, a length of string that's a third the size of the original thing, and then if we invert that, then that means the frequency is going to be triple the original one. 110, 220, 330. 330. Okay? That note is an E, right? E330 is the fifth, perfect fifth, that has a harmonic ratio of three halves of the original thing, or three fourths, I mean three over one in relation to the fundamental. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to turn the guitar like this so you can see a little better. So here we got 110, 220, 330, okay? 440, right? 440 is the A that we talk about a lot. Um, now why is this 440? Well, I mean, you could you could just go on, on the pattern that we we're dealing with. Like it's, Now it's dividing the string into four parts, and you, you're making a fourth of the string vibrate, and um, and the string has been cut into a size that's a fourth as big, so the frequency is going to be four times what the original was. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to think about it. You could also say just here's half, right? And I 
just going to say, well, where's half of the half? Where does that... It's here, right? That's half of this distance. Right? And this way, too. This is half of this, right? Why don't I hear it here? Well, the thing is, like, okay, I do one-fourth, two-fourths at the two-fourth spot. The, uh, the fourth partial is in there, but it's not as strong as the second partial. It's also at that spot. So the second partial is like covering it up. Um, so you don't actually hear that higher pitch as strong as the other one. I mean, this is the thing with, with, with tones, I guess, that I didn't mention, is that all these harmonics are kind of at every tone. Even when I play the fundamental, it has the overtone series of this pitch is, is, is present in, in very, like, in, 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 less audible ways and in, in combinations that give it the sound of what instrument it is. Like this sounds like a guitar, but the same note on a piano is going to sound different or on a saxophone or whatever um, because of the, the spectrum of, of partials that make up the sound. But um, that's a whole other topic, really. And uh, what I'm talking about here is just the, the most prominent sound that you hear. And at this spot, uh, halfway down the string, the fourth partial is there. But you don't hear it as strongly as you hear the second partial, right? So really, the, the places to get the fourth partial are here and here, okay? So, 110, 2, 20, 30, 40, 50, 550, 550, got a new note, C sharp, um, the major third, right? The fifth partial. So, the fifth partial divides the string into five parts. And those five parts have four places where you can play them, right? Right? So what I just did is I played uh, the, the, the fifth partial in each of the nodes that separate each of those five pieces. Okay? All right. 110, 220, 330, 445, 50, 660. 660 is the sixth partial. Uh, and it's dividing the string into six parts, right? The strings that you hear, the set pitch that you hear is like as if there was a string that was about this long, okay? As opposed to this, one-sixth. So, uh, you can hear the note is an E. Same as this, but an octave above. What I'm playing here is a third partial, and that makes sense, right? The sixth partial is a doubling of the third partial. Um, so, you can see that in, in the length, right? If this is the length of string for the third partial, I say, well, what's half of that? Half of that is about right here, right? Okay, and and uh, so you would say, uh, okay, six partial, there should be five places I could get that, right? Because it's six pieces and you go at each of the nodes. We go at one sixth, and then when we get to two sixths, well, you see it's the same thing that happens with the fourth partial where it gets covered up. Uh, the second uh, of the um, second location of the of the sixth partial, two sixths of the way down the string, is the same as one third. So uh, the third partial is the one that you hear strongly. Go to three sixths, you know the three sixths is the same as one half, right? So that's covered up by the second partial. The strongest partial at that location on the neck is the second partial, right? Uh, then we go to four sixths. Again, we hear the third partial because uh, the third partial is stronger than the sixth at that spot. So the only other place besides this is really up here at five sixths. See, and it's symmetrical. It's as far away from, from it's as far away from the bridge as this is from the nut. Okay. Seventh partial. Seven seventy. Right? And now we can hear this kind of thing. I'm playing a, like a dominant 7 chord. It sounds like an A7 chord, right? Uh, the 7, the of course, is flat. It's, the harmonic is quite a bit flat in relation to the um, equal tempered note, this note. Right? You can hear that difference. Um, so that, that's something I got into in that tuning video, actually. Um, but so you can hear this is also symmetrical, right? So I could do that here.
other strings. Right? So the seventh partial is it's not going to get covered up by any of those others as we go up the neck because seven is, is like a different type of way to divide the string than twos and threes. There's no commonality there. It's like a prime number. So, um, so you got one here, you have one here, right? And you have one here, right? And you have one here, one here, and one up here. Okay? So I just did six different locations of the seventh partial on the string. You see, these harmonics are all over the place. They're not just in, in one spot. Okay. So, uh, now we have all these notes. Uh, for the sake of um, just giving them names, I'm just going to call them by the equal tempered names, even though they're not totally accurate. But uh, I'm going to call this A, C sharp, E, G. Just like this. Okay? So you have A, C sharp, E, G. Now what if we just take um, uh, all those pitches off of every string? So for example, right? E, G sharp, B, D. D, F sharp, A, C. G, B, D, F. Right? B, D sharp, F sharp, A. And then E, G sharp, B, D up on the top. Um, if you put all those together, you have all the harmonics available on the guitar up to the seventh harmonic. Beyond the seventh, is, it gets quite a bit harder to do. You can certainly do it with, with um, uh, you know, different kind of guitars and louder volumes and overdrive and things like that. But this is a good place to start. Seven harmonics, seven partials. Um, so if we put all those together and, and order them and take out uh, redundancies, it, the, what you get is you get uh, 26 different uh, pitches. I mean, some of them are the same pitches in different octaves. Like, uh, but in terms of all the different notes you could get with the natural harmonics, you get there's 26. They start here. second and third harmonics on the low strings. See, it sounds like a E minor, G major pentatonic scale, just like the tuning of the guitar. Now after this, G natural, then you get this. You can get a fifth uh, partial on the um, E string here. Of course, you could have done it. You could have done it over there too, but that's a little harder to get to, so, so I'm playing it here. That's one of the reasons why I was looking at those different locations to get them. Right? You can actually get three semitones in a row there. G, G sharp, and A. So this, once you start integrating these fifth partials, this is the section that I'm calling medium terms of difficulty. Goes up to there. Up to the fifth partial on the on the uh, D string. It's F sharp. Okay? Now, uh, if you want to get any higher than that, you're going to have to come down to these higher partials, the fifth, sixth, seventh uh, area, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh area. Here's the next one, the G, right? Okay, this G, then you can come like this. This is going to get kind of hard to hear, I'm going to turn up. Da, 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 da. You can 
get those notes up in there. That's the whole thing. It gets a little hard to hear on the guitar. I, that's why at the beginning of the video I did that demonstration. I did that exact same thing, but um, on a guitar that's tuned down an octave. It's a little bit longer and it's tuned down an octave so that you can hear the, the harmonics a little better. But anyway, um, that's a, a, a starter thing on the harmonics. Then there's, an, then there's another exercise that goes up to the 11th harmonic, which is really uh, much more challenging. Uh, to try and get those, especially on the higher strings. Um, all right, so you could continue that idea with the harmonics out of the realm of natural harmonics into false harmonics, which are just the same thing, but uh, harmonics off of a stopped pitch. So, for example, um, okay, open string. Halfway down the string is the second partial, the octave. A stopped pitch, meaning a fretted note, like uh, I'm playing the A off of the E string. So now my, my string is is shorter, right? This is the new fundamental. It's like my guitar is now this long. That's the idea. So uh, I look at this new fundamental and I say, okay, what's halfway from here to here? Halfway from here to here is here, right? And so that's my uh, second partial off that A. Sounds the same as this. Almost the same. The timbre is different. I'm going... A open string to the second partial A, and I'm doing an A fretted note to the second partial of that A fretted note. Right? These, this is a false harmonic. This is a natural harmonic. Okay? But I see the the thing with false harmonics, you can get any note you want. So. I can just go up to any kind of note by just, just moving this accordingly, right? And what this is, is it's my fingers that's fretting it and then the, the, my thumb is plucking it behind, right? Um, I, could, I could use a pick and get a different kind of sound, a more of a bell tone kind of sound, like a... Uh, right? All right, so you could take that idea and really extend it into whatever area you work in. Like for me, um, I might take an improvisation and try to get the harmonics off of that improvisation, like something like, uh, mm, mm, 